Hey everyone, Levi here with Trident and Fly Fishing, and today we're gonna to be tying a GT brush fly. Let's get started right now with a Kamigatsu SC15 2H hook in the vise. This is a size 5 aught, it's a pretty big fly. You could use probably down to a 1 aught if you had a smaller fox brush, maybe the, I think it's an inch and a half, but this is a good large profile fly. Whether you're after GTs, uh, striped bass, bluefish, snook, you could probably feed it to a tarpon in the right situation and it would eat it. Probably take it offshore just the same too. So let's get our thread wound on the uh, shank and we're using six thousandths Danville monofilament thread for the uh, the whole fly. All right, once we get our thread base laid down, we're gonna move into some black bucktail. And what we're looking for is some length. And on this tail, just happens to be right here where your longer fibers are. It varies tail to tail, but this gets what we need. We're gonna get out about a pencil's width in thickness. We'll cut that off right at the base. Clean out any shorts that may be in there. Even your tips up on both ends. Make sure they look nice and again, get rid of any, any of those shorter fibers that won't contribute to your profile. And what we're doing, a few loose wraps and then we'll apply pressure and that will help situate these fibers to be 360 degrees around the hook shank and just a tip on that wherever you apply pressure with your fingers the bucktail is going to go in the opposite direction so if you want this to be underneath of the hook shank push it right up here right now the thread's too tight for it to actually demonstrate but if you push on the top it'll go down if you want it to go up push on the bottom it'll go up so do that you know, 360 degrees around the shank so that you have even distribution throughout. That's important to most predatory flies tied with bucktail. So now I'm not gonna clip these butt ends, but what I'll do is pull them rearward and just get my thread in front of them. Just sweep them back. And all that's gonna do is create a little bit of protection on that wrap right there. We're working with predatory fish but it's also gonna to help to add a little bit of bump for our feathers. We're gonna put four feathers in for a tail. It's just sort of a supporting system for those feathers. And from there, we're gonna move into some strung hackle. We're using black to go with the color of this fly. This is a fly that you can tie any range of colors that you like. And what I'm looking for here are some nice webby fibers, not super wide, but we want them to, we're going to use four feathers, so we're going to want them to create a profile there that's nice and swimmy. So this one's good. Now let's look for three others that kind of fit that bill. Here's two. Pop those off. So we have four feathers that are pretty common qualities. I'm going to tie the first one. We're going to sort of tent these wings, or wing, I'm sorry, these tails couple loose wraps and then position them. We're gonna put one on the side nearest us and then we'll move the side away from us and sort of tent these two together or maybe you refer to it as two hands cupped together like they're praying. Break those stems so that they get more movement in the fly. And now we have two on the top. Rotate our vise. It really helps to have a rotary vise with this fly and we're going to throw two on the bottom. And this is a fly that we're tying it in black. It's an effective color, especially if you're fishing at night for, say, a striped bass or something like that. But this is a fly that you can tie in almost any assortment of colors. Anything that you can come up with probably will work. All white's another good option. White with an olive head, white with a tan head, white with a red head. The, the color possibilities are nearly endless. So let's tie our last feather in right there. And we want these to be almost 360 degrees around the hook shank, but we don't have a full set tied in the round, I think is the term, if you're tying a semper fly or something like that. But four big webby feathers gets the job done here. And then we'll get in here and clean up the, those uh, stems
we'll move right on into some flash after that. Let me just clean this up. This is a uh, flash of blue. It's a standard pearl color. You can use any flash that you want in here, but this one just happens to create a nice oil slick look to these black flies. So get yourself eh, four or five strands, doesn't wholly matter. And we'll tie these on the side facing us. So measure those out on one side, leave yourself enough for the opposing side and tie those right on in. That way you have even flash on both sides of your fly. And if you wanna really add some durability, you can go ahead and coat that with some head cement or something like that, maybe even super glue if you want, but that will aid in durability if you're fishing for something that has a lot of teeth, maybe bluefish, pike, musky, or uh, what's another one? That's probably all I'm coming up with. And now moving back into some bucktail, again black. We're looking for this bucktail to be again long because we want it to be about 70% uh, or so of that long tail. Get yourself off a little more than a pencil width. This fly tends to be pretty bulky. It's a Fly for catching those massive trevally, but again, you can use it. Pike will eat it, striped bass will eat it, bluefish will eat it, snook will eat it. Probably get a tarpon in the right situation. I'm sure it would eat this as well. Clean out your shorts, even those fibers up, and then we'll measure this. That's perfect. You wanna leave yourself a little bit of butt ends there, but get in there with a couple loose wraps but securing, or loose but securing wraps rather. And then we're gonna work this all the way around the hook shank. Again, using that pressure to make it go in the opposite direction until it's fully around the hook and evenly distributed. And all the materials that we're working with today can be found at tridentflyfishing.com and orders over 49 bucks do ship for free. We'll uh, push these fibers back. And again, that will work to protect those thread wraps while also propping up our last tie of bucktail. So build a thread dam there. And we'll come in here with just a little more flash. You can stagger your flash however you like, but I like to get a couple strands in each tie so that way it's evenly placed throughout the whole fly. Throw that on one side. Tie it. Tie it in. And then pull it over to the other side. And that'll evenly distribute it on both sides. So now we'll make a thread dam to just keep this bucktail here propped rearward. And once we're happy with that, let's just go ahead and coat the rest of this hook before we tie our last bunch of bucktail in. We're gonna wanna size this up so that it is again about 20% shorter than the hairs we just tied in. And we're looking for about a pencil width thickness. Cut that close to the hide. Clean out the shorts. Make sure everything's nice and uh, you don't want it to be paintbrush straight. You want a little bit of diversity in your fiber lengths, but you want it to be generally the same length. But we'll just measure that against the previous one. We want it to be about 20% shorter than the previous bunch and that'll just create a nice naturally flowing taper to this fly. And in fact, that's a little too little bucktail. So let me add a few more fibers in there. Take off those wraps just to accommodate that extra deer tail. And now that we have those couple loose but securing wraps in, we'll apply pressure and get this wrap 360 degrees around the hook shank. All right. And again, we're gonna wanna fold these rearward, cut them first. 
you want about a third of an inch there. It'll vary depending on the size of your fly you're tying. But what that bucktail is gonna do is provide sort of a bracing support for the fox brush we're gonna tie in. So take those, sweep, sweep them rearward, sort of like a Bob Popovic's bulkhead, but it's also just a prop with the same sort of technique, just a little less cleaner too. Get that thread wound forward. Now we'll go ahead and create that dam to keep everything pushed rearward and create a nice profile. If you guys like what you see today, be sure to hit the like button below. And if you really like what you see, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of these videos that we have coming out in the future. And you wanna be sure to leave yourself enough room to adequately wrap our fox brush head. This is a little long, we'll go ahead and trim that up a bit. Sweep that back. And now we'll clean up that eye with some thread before we move on into our EP Foxy brush. We're gonna use the three inch size and the color black. It's got some nice red flash in there as well. So we'll pull one of these out. So you'll notice we have two separate ends to this. This one is sort of shaped like a U. I'm not gonna tie that in. I tie this side that whenever you fold it back, it has this sort of nice natural taper to it. You can tie them in from either end, but you're gonna get a cleaner fly if you tie this end in. If you were tying a smaller fly, I think there's a one and a half inch out there. That'll work just fine. So get that secured, and instead of cutting that excess wire, I'll just go ahead and pull it rearward and wrap it in. And then we'll go ahead and give a nice even uh, thread base there that we can wrap this brush on. I'm gonna take this, sweep the fibers rearward, and wrap this nice and evenly all the way to the hook eye and this builds bulk and also ties the whole look of this fly together creates a nice profile and this rear or forward bulk is going to create rearward motion in the water that's a good principle of all large predatory flies especially those that are constructed using bucktail and feathers I fit one or two more wraps up there. Looks like just one. And you want to try to trap as few fibers as possible, though it can be tough with these brushes. And usually you get about two flies out of one of these brushes of this size. So get that secured. And what I tend to do, instead of again putting your finger or your scissors through the ringer, if you just back and forth, wind that sort of like a helicopter, pops right off and you didn't have to do anything with your scissors. All right, so go ahead and get yourself a nice clean head and we'll hit it with a quick half hitch. What we're gonna do is move right on into this brush. We're just gonna take this and hit our head with it everywhere that this fox is going to be tied in and that's just going to free up any trapped fibers it creates a nicer profile more consistent head on there and you can get in there with a bodkin too if you don't have one of these brushes but these brushes are pretty solid they're essentially a dog fur brush so if you have one of those laying around that'll work but otherwise you might want to invest in one of these all right, so from here, we're gonna throw some eyes on this fly. We're using these Pro Sport Fisher eyes. They're real nice and realistic, and also real big. So let's grab two off of there. And what I do is remove the sticky on this. Just kind of rub your finger on there. That way it won't trap fibers in your head or 
kind of prevent the overall profile. And also, just take it, bend it right down the middle. That's gonna prevent it from ripping whenever you go to tie it in. And I want this eye to be seated pretty far back. So let's get it into position and just tie it right on in. And then we'll do the other side just the same. Measure it against this one. And then you can measure it right there as well, just to make sure that they're the same length. And hit it with a few wraps, tight wraps to keep it nicely seated and secured. And then you don't even need to cut them. If you just get in there and pull it down, these things rip right off and makes everything nice and clean without potentially dulling your scissors. From here, I'm just gonna hit it with a couple whip finishes. We'll throw two on this fly because with this uh, six thousandths monofilament, sometimes it has a little memory, so you end up losing one. But that is a GT brush fly. I wanna thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time.